Hey everyone, welcome to the brand new year, first installment of The Way It Is, and uh, new year, new brand, uh, new team, not new team per se, but new branding on the team. So going forward, we're, we're, we're bringing the boys out of the shadows and into the limelight uh, with a new Team Luca first Um some new branding and look for that on all our social media feeds uh, and and our marketing materials. So exciting news there. Um, so what we're going to do today, uh, be given that's the first podcast of the year, Sam's going to talk to us and I'll segue right to him about the year that was 2021. Sounds good. Uh, all right. So I guess for starters, because we've been seeing some predictions for uh, this year of 2022, last year, uh, Remax predicted for the year of 2021 uh, that we'd see a 10% increase in real estate across the board. They were very wrong. We saw a 25% increase. Uh, so really blew that one out of the water. Uh, but I'd also like to break it down into each category to kind of put some more perspective on what happened in real estate. Because I know a lot of news articles or media and stuff like that would highlight some things that seemed ridiculous. Uh, for example, a place being listed at $500,000 and then selling for $900,000. That was not the norm. Uh, that should not discourage anyone from buying real estate or looking to do so, and here's why. Uh, first, in residential real estate in Kingston, the average list price over this year was $548,000. Uh, days on the market was 22, despite everyone saying everything was selling the next day. Uh, the sale price was $578,000, so a 7% increase. We're not seeing a $100,000 increase, just 7% kind of across the board. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen because we've been in scenarios where something is priced significantly below the market or there's a significant opportunity that maybe some people weren't aware of and someone kind of crushed it with a significant offer of 100000 or more over the asking. Uh, also to note, in multi-residential, so your triplexes, fourplexes, and sixplexes, and so on, um, as well as commercial real estate and land, uh, the list price did uh, was actually ahead of the sale price. So things were being put on the market uh, for multi-residential around a million dollars, uh, and it was selling for 0.2% less. So mm -hmm. roughly around the list price. Uh, for commercial, it was being it was around nine hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars, and being sold for uh, nine percent less than that. Uh, and then finally, for land, uh, it was around two hundred and sixty three thousand dollars, and selling for roughly two hundred and sixty thousand, so about a one percent. Uh, also to note, each of these categories had a rough days on market of over fifty, uh, and then commercial real estate having ones of over one hundred and twenty five. Um, so kind of to put that information to good use uh, with the expected 10% increase, which Joel will go into more detail about uh, for, for the coming year. Uh, I wouldn't uh, take that as a reason to shy away from the market because uh, the real values don't often indicate the ones that we see in the media. Yeah, no, and that, <clears throat> all very good points, Sam, and that's great and good information to flesh out because you're right. People just get the sound bites and the snippets, and and the uh, and then it's out of context. And we've talked about this through all my podcasts. So, and some things to to flesh out of this too, um, just briefly is yes. Uh, you know, the average days on the market's 22. And of course, that that's that's a year average, meaning that certain times of the year, like at the end of this year, uh, we saw things that have been hanging on like they always do. And I've seen it in, throughout my career finally get picked over and, and sold, right? Um, and, and normally the good thing is about this market, and I've talked about it before, uh, and we have a listing coming on next week that will be doing the same thing, is this model of listing the property, holding offers for five to seven days and then and then getting the offer. So at a minimum, a property is going to be on the market on average five to seven days, which is again, so that's going to just play with the averages. The second thing is, and this is a point that I will say that I've uh, uh, talked about and, and um, uh, I can't think of the word, I'm, I'm having a brain fart, but the point being that Kingston values, relatively speaking, are still undervalued. I know there's people here locally that are thinking I got five heads and that will swear at me and everything else, mm -hmm. given what's happening in the marketplace. But I'm going to tell you this, Kingston, relatively speaking, 
is still an inexpensive place to live and to buy real estate, all right? Let's put this into perspective. The same townhome or semi that you're going to buy here for $450,000 now or $500,000 now, you walk that down the highway west here about two hours, and I'm going to tell you this, it's going to be over a million dollars. So relatively speaking, real estate in Kingston is still uh, undervalued in my opinion. And so. just just to add to that, to kind of put it even into this, this is like a treat to those investors out there. But our rents are roughly the same as those two hours west That's of the right. city. That's right. Um, you can get higher cap rates. I believe the average that we were looking for at the start of this year was five percent. Yeah. Now that has gone down to around four and a half percent, but that cap rate in Toronto is three point eight. That's right. Yeah, so no, no. so yeah, Kingston still benefits from a very low vacancy rates premium rental rates. Uh, and again, it, that's why we're seeing all this huge influx, just we're going a little bit off topic, but this huge influx still of absentee landlords and investors buying in the Kingston market, C- accompanied sadly, uh, 50% of the time with their unknowing, idiotic agents from the GTA uh, selling them the properties here that they know nothing about. But yeah. anyway, enough and, on that. Yeah, and, and obviously those rents aren't just random, right? It's not just going to be a blip and then they're going to drop to half of that, right? It's because we have those hospitals. We have a handful of prisons. We have uh, two colleges and a university, right? Those those are not going anywhere. No. And Never. just one more thing before we get too much off topic, but to add to that is that our rents could be per se artificially low because we have all these things bringing in uh, tenants, but the thing we don't have right now is our universities working at full capacity, international students as well as those people who chose to stay home. So after the pandemic, we could see an even higher jump because all that's going to return. Absolutely. All right. So we'll turn it over to Joel for a quick little sort of crystal ball look oh, into God. 2022. Yeah. I don't know. So if, he, if it all goes to <laughs> shit, he's to blame. Yeah, so. apparently. Take this all with a grain of rice <laughs> because we saw what happened from Sam's uh, stats here. Last year, they were predicting uh, 10% and, well, Remax, right? Remax was predicting 10%. They're predicting 10% again. So I wouldn't put too much weight into that. Sam, Luca, and I both believe with all the current factors kind of COVID still around, right? It's still a thing. People are still leaving um, those larger metropolitan areas that have seen larger increases over the years to find cheaper accommodation, especially with work from home being something that's probably here to stay for a lot of different organizations. I know there'll be those few out there that, you know, bosses, you know, get in the office sort of thing. But for the most part, a lot of those hybrid workplaces or fully work from home are here to stay. That's gonna allow people to be a lot more flexible in where they're living, whether that's in smaller cities or more rural areas. Um, We still have those interest rates that are low, historically low. Uh, obviously, you could get a fixed rate, fixed five year for that one percent in that kind of peak COVID area. We're now around two and a half, but those are still historically some of the lowest rates we've ever yeah. had. Yeah. People are still going to be jumping on that as as much as they can. And don't forget all these buyers that have been priced out over the past couple of years. If we see a tiny drop at all in prices and they're able to jump in on the market, they're going to be there. They're, they've been waiting and they're they're ready to pounce at, at a moment's notice sort of thing. So on top of that 10% that Remax is predicting, CREA, which is the National uh, Real Estate Association, is predicting a, a national percentage increase of 7.6. That is obviously even lower than the Remax's 10%. Same sort of thing. I would take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, and again, those are national averages, so that's where you have to again put. So bringing it down, sort of more to Kingston, Kingston centric, I guess, if you will. Um, you know, here's the thing that's never changed in the 33 years of, of me selling real estate in this city. Joel just touched on it. We have a high concentration of uh, government employed people. Uh, with all of the institutional work that we have in this city, uh, vis-a-vis the universities, colleges, uh, in, um, the penitentiaries, the military, OPP, RCMP, Kingston Police, uh, the hospitals, you name it. Um, in as much as the uh, sadly uh, these uh, nurses and essential caregivers are burning out, uh, the stories uh, in the news are that they 
kids can actually get placed now in into the into those fields in university. Yeah. They're getting turned away yeah. Yeah. Uh, because there's a f- influx of, of people wanting to go into those fields, which is encouraging. That's some good news. Yeah, yeah it is some good news because there is going to be a, a, a gap between those that are here now and those that are still yet to come. Um, and then the other thing is, um, and I've touched on this on a previous podcast, and I guess the, the, the good and the bad with Omicron and, and hence why we're wearing our masks uh, today during the podcast, um, just to be extra safe. And, you know, Sam's got a young one at home and uh, all of that um, is that the good, I guess, and not to play doctor because we've had Dr. Evans on here and I'll defer to his <laughs> expertise. But from the outside looking in, it certainly seems that the, if there's any positive side effect to Omicron, that it burns hot and it burns fast and it gets through pretty quick. So as much as the number of cases are mounting and, and, and exponentially, uh, those that are vaccinated and uh, we're all triple vax now, are we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if, if we do get it, which chances are sitting here, one of us is going to have have it, if not all three of us or something, um, that it's going to be very mild symptoms and it's going to come and go pretty quickly and, mm-hmm. and, and hopefully. So hopefully, you know, these newest lockdown measures, of course, are to curb uh, some of those hospital visits and things like that. But um, so that being said, you know, what's still going to happen is, as Joel touched on, this migration of people to this area because it's a desirable area, because values are still relatively inexpensive. People still want their recreational properties. People still want, you know, a rural setting now as opposed to urban sidewalks. The other thing is immigration. All right. Immigration is still a thing. Uh, and when people can start flying and, and the immigration starts going back to its full peak, we are going to, this country, this city, this province is going to have a massive influx of people migrating from other countries because they know that Canada is a good place to live, work, raise your children and everything else, right? So that is going to be the the tipping point or one of the tipping points in a market where, as we've talked from day one, there is very little inventory continuing. That's a trend that is continuing it will continue, and the demand will still remain, regardless of interest rates, regardless of inflation, regardless of all of that. Will interest rates go up? In uh, They're predicted to by the end of Q2. The Bank of Canada has got to probably do something to show that they're doing something against inflation. Um, but even still, you know, I've talked about this before. When I started in 1989, the average five-year money was 12%. Okay, folks? So it's now 2.5%. <laughs> so that's still... And 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 let's keep in mind, the government's done its job. They've put in that uh, stress test. So people are getting approved at 5.5% or 5 and a quarter, whatever it is, and then able to take 25 So there already is a slush built in there in terms of affordability and making a payment at the end of the month, depending what happens with interest rates and stuff. Yeah. So, um, any other comments, guys? Uh, just one thing going back to the immigration. I'm pretty sure before the pandemic start, th- started, there was a major government push on increasing the amount of immigrants that we were bringing into this country. Obviously, that was put on hold. Uh, so to obviously look in our crystal bars, balls even further into the future. Um, or if obviously the pandemic starts to come not necessarily a pandemic. Yes, immigration is going to be a huge factor here in Canada and in terms of uh, demand for real estate, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And then, so in closing, uh, thank you for, A, tuning in all of last year to the podcast. I appreciate everybody that, that follows and, and, and listens and pays attention. Um, and, uh, you know, we've had some great guests. We hope to have great guests coming on in the future. And then I'll take, a, I guess, a, a moment of pandering and pure solicitation, um, because as we embark on this new marketing strategy and, and Joel and Sam, um, we're not a team on, uh, like every other real estate team out there. We're, we're not order takers. We have have specialized skill sets. Uh, both these guys have degrees in their respective fields. Uh, Joel's is in the environmental field. Sam's in commerce, marketing, finance. Uh, I just have 33 years of kicking this shit around. For, <laughs> so, you know, uh, my degree is real life, sadly, but because uh, my political studies degree back from Queens, just <laughs> although I have to say I've been more of a politician probably over the 33 years than, uh, than not. But that being said, w- w- just even give 
given this brief little podcast that we've done, our abilities to service our clients, research for our clients, respond to our clients, communicate with our clients. Uh, I'm going to tell you this. There is no one in this city doing real estate, doing it the way we do it at the level we do it at. So that's it. That's my little five minutes or two minutes of uh, solicitation. I appreciate you uh, following. And thanks, guys, for uh, pitching in. Thank you. And we look forward to 2022. So stay, stay healthy, stay safe. We'll catch you on the next one. Perfect. Bye-bye.